Hey guys, welcome back to another 3D printing video. And we got a pretty exciting video today because Elegoo has a new printer that's called Saturn and it is quite a bit larger than the Mars. And if you've been following resin printers, you know that the Mars is one of the most popular printers. So I really have high hopes for this Saturn and I have a feeling it's gonna be very impressive. So in this video, we're gonna unbox it, set it up and do some test print. All right, so let's get started. Alright, so the Saturn printer comes in this box here and it has a little picture of what it looks like in the front. So the box is definitely a pretty large size. There's another picture here. But just keep in mind that it is a little bit larger than you would think for a resin printer. Alright, so let's get this thing open. So there's probably a few ways you can open this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it around and just pull the box out. And wow, this thing is definitely quite large. So there was styrofoam all around it and it got left in the box. So it's packed very well. So it looks like we have a little box here on the top. So yeah, this is definitely a really nice size because we're used to small resin printers and it seems like that's you know one of the limitations to them. But it looks like Saturn here has given us the size that we can really expand of what we can print with resin printers. So it is protected by all this plastic. And by the way, this thing has definitely got a little bit of weight to it. And definitely a really nice look. Let's pull this cover off. Set it to the side for now. So we got a lot more foam inside. Lots of beefy protection. Here we can see the build plate. And it's definitely quite large. So we got like a matte aluminum finish on the bottom. So it does look like it has a little bit of grain to it. It's not smooth. And that should help with the print sticking. And then we have a nice tapered top. So the resin runs off on each corner. Very nice and good design. And we have a beefy connector here with a bolt screw. And it looks like to be a ball joint that you can adjust by these two bolts here. More foam. So let's take a closer look at it so you guys can see better. The Z axis is very beefy. So we got two linear rails. Everything is metal. Looks like aluminum. Even here on the top, everything is high quality. So it is using some kind of optical sensor right there. That's how it knows where to start from. And I'm really liking the tub here because they incorporated it from the Mars Pro, which has very slim bezels and can fit more resin in here. Not only that, it eliminates the weight of handling it and also just more attractive looking. So we have two knobs here that if we unscrew them, quite a long bolt. This tub should just come right out. Here on the sides, you can see it has little handles on each side to raise it up very nice so that's what the bottom looks like and this is removable so one interesting detail i'm noticing is these bolts here they actually stick out past the tub so they're kind of like feet so when you set this thing down like this you're not sitting on the screen itself which is quite important because a lot of times when you're pulling this thing out you want to set it down like this because it has resin in it and you were not really able to set it down on anything because you'd be setting it straight on the screen but here it has little feet so there's a little gap that keeps it from touching the bottom but not only that, it also lines the tub up because here we can see there's little round holes here and that's for those bolts to fit in and it literally locks it into it. And that's a really smart design compared to, you know, having a little groove somewhere. So it's very clever how they designed that. So here we have the screen and this is where the images are projected for the resin to cure. And it looks like there's a little protective plastic over it. You can see the little bubbles there. So a beautiful machine and it definitely feels pro right off the bat. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this tub back in. You guys will see how it just drops in. Just like that. So this part here is kind of, you know, I guess you could call it old school where you have to actually put the bolts in. But I would prefer that compared to some complicated latching or whatnot else, so. All right, so let's go down and look at the front fascia here. We have a really huge logo. And then we have this nice little touch screen. 
And below the screen is a USB type plug where we're gonna bring the files in with a thumb drive. It also looks like there's a little quality control sticker here. Kind of in the wrong place. Probably should have been in the back. So on the side of the printer is quite clean. Same thing on this side. But on the back here we can see we have a pretty interesting thing going on here. So we have two fans and that's for the cooling, mostly for the ultraviolet lights. We have the power port, the on and off switch, and it looks like a hard wiring to the internet with an ethernet cable. So it looks like this printer has more capabilities for connecting. And here we have some stats of the machine, and it does weigh 10 kilograms, which is about 22 pounds, I guess. So, And here we can see the bottom. There's actually two large fans here also, and I don't know if you guys can see through the venting holes but I can definitely see the huge heat sinks in there and the printer does sit on these plastic feet which actually are adjustable up and down so the plastic feet makes it nice where you can slide the printer around but I think I would have preferred a rubber foot but I could be wrong maybe that's not better alright so for next part let's open this box and see what we have in here so first things first a power supply and it is a 24 volt 5 amp. So we get the US power cord, some strainers for pouring resin. We also get some cutters and they are the nice ones. So this is to cut off your supports off of the models. It's nice that they include us. A spatula to scrape the models off and it is sharpened so, but I'm glad that it is because when they don't come sharpened they're pretty much useless. Another spatula which is plastic and this is good to just kind of push the models off if you have something more fragile or just another option. An Allen wrench hex tool. Looks like a baggie of extra hardware and a large Allen wrench and also a smaller one. So the large Allen wrench is for adjusting these bolts here and looks like we have some gloves for protection and a little measuring cup if you wanted to use this and also we get two looks like pretty nice high quality masks and especially right now these are quite invaluable so also there was this little card here and this is the leveling paper but it's more like a board because it's quite thick so i guess you do need a little bit more distance on a resin printer and last but not least we have the usb thumb drive so this is probably going to have some of our files to the printer and also probably has some test files that we can print so let's go ahead and unwrap this cover and one thing that I really like that Elego does is that they have the top in one piece so there's no, you know, assembling and they're a lot more sturdier and thicker. So just like the Mars printers, it looks like the Saturn here has also this nice, beautiful red top. Very cool. Alright, so now that we unboxed everything and looked at all the pieces, let's go ahead and plug the power into the back. So when you plug in the power adapter, it does have a little green light. And it looks like it has a reach of about 8 feet. So, so let's go ahead and plug it in. I'm going to flip it back around. I'm going to turn it on. we got a Saturn logo. And it's on. So standby noise is quite quiet. I can hear the fans, but it's not loud. So let's take a closer look at the UI here. We have tools, system, and print. So the UI looks very similar to the Mars Pro, at least the way it looks. Well, let's click on tools. So this is where we can control the printer. This is manually going up and down in the amounts. And you can also home it here. So exposure is to test the UV lights in the printer. And here it says for how long you want to turn them on, 15 seconds. Click next. It's going to project an image. And we can see that on the top. And looking down into the UV lights, we can see that they are kind of dome shaped like bubbles. And I think this is to spread the UV light very evenly across the whole screen. All right, so we'll go back. So here we have a home set to zero button. And if we click that, and it's telling us before we can set home, we have to first move to zero. So we have a stop button. So if you want to stop the machine, no matter what it's doing, we've got a dedicated button for that. Tank clean. And it has something to do with cleaning the tank and that's just turning on all the lights. So what happens is if you have a little bit of liquid or resin inside your tank, what it's going to do is it's going to solidify it. That way you can peel it off instead of trying to remove every little drop. And so yeah, that's pretty much all the controls that you have. And that's what makes resin printers quite intriguing is that they're quite simple to use. There's no real adjustment or fine tuning of any kind. Most of that is done in the software when you're slicing your model. So let's go to systems next. We have information and it looks like here we can also turn on and off the speaker. So if you didn't want it to beep, this is where you'd be able to 
Turn that off. So here we can connect to the internet. And on the top left corner here, you can toggle between the hardwire or the Wi-Fi. So you got two options to connect. So here's a service button, and it just kind of tells you how to reach them. Languages, looks like Chinese or English. Touch calibration, which I think if you want to calibrate your screen, and probably don't want to do that. So and that's pretty much it, guys. So very, very simple. And so our last button here is print, and that is going to read off of this USB drive. If we click it, you can see it's empty. So let's go ahead and insert the thumb drive that was included, and it does glow. So now if we hit print, we can see that there's some files on there. So we have a folder here. So it looks like a PDF of the manual and another folder here. It says machine parameters G code. So it appears to be that the two folders here does not include models. And if they are, they're not available here. So it looks like we're gonna have to go to the computer and dig a little deeper and see what's on the card. So for the next part, let's go ahead and level the build plate. So in order to do that, first we need to take off the tub. Then we're gonna go to tools, manual, and let's go ahead and bring it up 10 millimeters, or maybe a little more. And we can see it rising here. It's ultra quiet. And also you can see there's a little red light, and that is the sensor for the Z-axis. So now let's grab our build plate and put it onto the Z-axis frame. It literally just slides in there, and then you tighten it with this huge knob on the top. Now before you do anything else, you want to loosen these two bolts here. And the reason you want to do that because we don't know if this thing is going to be too low or not right now. And so by loosening the bolts, the whole build plate is loose and it actually also is on a spring that goes up and down. And so that's to compensate for whenever this thing goes down, it can be a little higher or a little lower. So now we're going to grab our little leveling paper, which is more like a cardboard, and we're simply just going to set it right in there between the screen and the build plate. And now we can go ahead and click home and it'll drop it down until it sets to home. And you can kind of see where the plate stops, but this still goes down a bit. And so now what we want to do is just make sure this is, you know, as flat as it can be and also make sure it's orientated right because it does move in a circle or it can move back and forth like this also. So try to line it up as straight as possible. And then when you feel like, you know, everything looks good, we can go ahead and tighten these two big bolts here. Now the way I like to do it is I like to put a little pressure on both sides of the plate that way we're very even while tightening this because sometimes when you tighten this it'll raise one end or lower the other so it's good to give it just a slight pressure before tightening it. So I'm going to go ahead and snug these up a little more. So you definitely don't want to go crazy tight these are big bolts. Just barely snug and that looks really good. So I'm gonna choose the 0.1 millimeters and I'm gonna raise it just ever so slightly. And that should give my paper here just barely enough room to slide around. And also you can kind of eyeball it and see what kind of crack you got all around the build plate and see how level it is. And that's basically how you level the build plate. So now all we need to do is raise this thing back up. And if you keep pushing up, it'll keep adding 10, 10, 10 millimeters up. And just like that, we tighten it back up. So really it's not too complicated as you see guys to get started. So for the next part, because there's no files looks like or they're not coming up on the thumb drive, let's go ahead and jump to the computer and we'll check out what's on this card. And also take a quick look at the Chitu Box slicer. All right guys, so here we are at the computer and I have the thumb drive plugged in. So let's go ahead and open it up. And this is what we see. So it looks like we have a little PDF here of the manual and what everything is. And here we have a test folder with an STL file of a Rook. It does say Saturn on it here, so. So here we have a folder of some more STL models, and I guess these are just some of the models that you could print if you wanted to on this printer. So I might try out some of these. So here we have a file that's called Saturn Machine Parameters G code, but I'm not sure exactly what this is for. And then we have the slicing software for the different operating systems here and it is the cheat 2 box so i already have the cheat 2 box downloaded so if you don't have it make sure you install it so let's go ahead and open it up so this is what the cheat 2 box looks like and so to add the saturn parameters what you can do is click on settings here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a new printer click on it and here we have some choices of all the printers and if we scroll down just a bit we can see saturn is right here so it's already in the system press OK and everything else should be exactly where it needs to be for this printer. So this is really easy and we don't have to do much. 
So now we're on the Saturn profile. And by the way, this is our print size right here, which is 192 by 120 by 200 high. So a very nice size for a resin printer. All right, so if we exit this out, we can see this is our build plate of the Saturn. So let's go back to our file here, the test file. And I guess we're just gonna slice this ourselves. So we just drag the file in there and drop it and it's gonna position itself right in the middle. So we're not gonna do anything to this because it should print without any kind of modifications. But if you wanted to do modifications, you can, you have a few choices of what you can do. So if you select the model here, you can change the axis of it, rotate it, different directions, resize it, different sizes, and even mirror it. So all the way up here, we have a few more options. And one of the more important ones would be hollow and dig hole. And this is where you can make a model hollow on the inside and then dig holes through the model to drain the resin out. And over here on the side, we have more controls. So here's our looking field. You can go to wherever you want. And then here we have layers. So you can go through your layers. This right here is the file. And then the settings button that you guys saw. And this will be the slice button that you push when you're ready to print. But over here, you can see we have the support section. So if you click on this, you're going to get all these different parameters for support. So if you want to learn more about how to use the Cheetah Box, there's definitely plenty of videos out there. So, but with this print and many others, actually, you don't have to do anything. You just print it the way it is. So let's go ahead and click the slice button and it's going to slices a code. And so here it projects an image of what is going to be printing each layer. And there's a total of 999 layers on here, quite a few layers. So here it says the volume, the weight, and I guess the price of about how much it costs according to some parameter. And most importantly, the time it will take to print this rook, which is five hours and 43 minutes. And the reason it's gonna take that long is because it's actually quite a large piece and quite tall. So now all we gotta do is click save and it will put it in our thumb drive. And just like that, it's gonna write the file and save it. And then we're gonna to go to the printer and print this piece out. All right, so we're back at the printer. Let's go ahead and see if our file is there. And sure enough, we can see it's right there. And there's actually a little preview there that shows us what we're about to print. Now, before I click the start button here, we need to go ahead and put some resin in the printer. And the resin I like to use is the original Elegoo Gray. It's actually a really nice resin and it prints come out really good. So when you buy a machine like this, you definitely wanna go ahead and get some resin. But don't forget with this kind of bed size, you're gonna need quite a bit more than you're used to if you had smaller resin printers. Now you do want to shake it up just a little bit, not violently, if it you know was just sitting there for a while. We want all those contents in there and mixed up. And so we're just gonna simply pour it in the vat. And as you guys can see, it's taking quite a bit of resin. So I think I'll stop right there. And that's literally three quarters of it. So only got a little bit left. Now here's some important reminders to note. You wanna be running this printer with all this resin somewhere where you have plenty of ventilation. Because if you breathe too much of this stuff, it can definitely mess with your body, so. And also wear the mask that was provided and definitely the gloves once you, you know, start messing with it. Just pouring it in is all nice and clean, but when the model's done, we definitely gonna have to put out our gloves once we start removing it and cleaning the bed and all these things, so. All right, so let's go ahead and click start. And there it goes. So right now it's doing its first layer and the first few layers are always gonna take a little while because it's having to do the exposure a bit longer. So let's take a closer look at the screen. So here we can see the layer that's being exposed right now. Here we have a stop, a pause, and some settings. The bar percentage of how much has been completed, the file name, and then over here we have the amount of time that it's gonna to take to print, which is four hours and 21 minutes. And the one here is how much time has passed, which is three minutes. And we are on our third layer right now. So let's click the settings button here. Here you can see the parameters and you can actually adjust these when you click on it. So the bottom five layers will be 52 seconds exposure time. And then after that, it's eight seconds exposure time. So if you click on this, you can change it. So let's say you wanna change your exposure time on the fly here can do that also. So yeah, we are on our fourth layer. So after the fifth layer, it's gonna do only eight seconds in between layers. All right, so it's done with our long exposure times. Now it's only taking eight seconds in between to do the layers. So we are on our eighth layer. So yeah, it looks like everything is working fine and it is creating our model right now. So the only thing left to do is to cover it with this cover here. And the reason you want to cover it is not only it will minimize fumes, but it'll also protect the resin 
from UV light getting in. And especially if you're in a room where sunlight is coming through, it's quite important that you keep this lid on. All right, so I'm just gonna let this thing print and now we'll come back after it's finished and check out how it turned out. Actually guys, I do wanna check something that I feel is quite an important feature and that is when you pause the machine, does it raise the bill plate so you can see because a lot of times when you first start out printing, you don't really know if your model has stuck or started. So we're on our 27th layer and it would be nice to see you know, if it's stuck on and everything's fine. So usually you probably wanna wait a little more than this but we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna to try to pause it and uh, we're gonna see if it raises up high enough so we can look at it. So let's go ahead and put pause. And I'm going to remove the cover. And so it looks like it is coming up. All right, so it is coming up. That's great. So this is a great feature to have because you don't know what's going on underneath. I'm bringing a little light here. But yeah, you can see that little circle right there. So everything is good. So before you spend, you know, hours and hours printing something, you want to make sure it's, you know, stuck to the bed. And it's awesome that this printer lets you do that. So now all we got to do is push resume again and it's gonna go back to printing where it left off, which is layer 28. All right, so it looks like our print is finished. Let's go ahead and take this cover off. So on the screen here, it says it's done, and it took five hours and 11 minutes, and that's quite long. I wonder why it took that long. So we're gonna push confirm, and it just goes back to its main menu. So it looks like our Rook is successfully printed, but before we take it off, we need to put our gloves on. So you definitely don't want resin getting on your skin. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off, move it to the side a bit. And the reason for that is because we're gonna need more things. So I got this little pan here, and you can use anything you want, like a container, sharpened spatula, and most importantly, you're gonna need alcohol. So I got this 91%, which is quite nice. Usually quite hard to get this kind of percentage, but in any case, the higher, the better. The lower percentages will just have more water in it, so it'll just be a little harder to clean. So all we gotta do is unscrew this knob here, just a little bit, and then this will slide out and the whole build plate comes off. And you guys can see on the top here, we barely have any kind of resin sitting on the plate. So you have a lot less chance of, you know, dripping resin all over the place. So actually, you know, we barely have anything really. All right, so let's set it down, grab our alcohol and rinse it off a bit. So since we're gonna keep printing, I'm not going to clean off the plate. I'm just gonna take the model off and then put the build plate back on the printer. So let's see how easy the model will come off. It is stuck on there quite well. It's not coming off that easy just pushing on it. So let me try hitting on it. And there we go. So there's not really a graceful way to get these models off. All right, so now we can give it a nice good bath. And this should be enough. So after you clean it with the alcohol, the next thing you wanna do is let it cure. And the best way to do that is leave it out in the sun. Unless you have a dedicated UV machine that will cure it with UV light, leaving it outside is the next best thing. All right, so here we are outside and the Rook has sit in the sun for about a couple hours and it's quite dry now. It does need a little more drying. And right off the bat, guys, I'm quite impressed with it. It's definitely on par with the Mars resin printer and it looks like maybe even the Mars Pro. So as far as I can see, it seems like a very nice finish. And if we look on the top, we can see that there's some lettering there. I can show you guys better here, but you can see how clean that turned out. It's quite detailed and very, very readable as you can see. So, And we do have like a staircase going down, which turned out very well. And there's a little helix inside also. So overall, very impressive. And just like I expected, excellent print quality. So I started printing some more models and everything is going good so far. No issues whatsoever. I'm really liking the size overall of this printer. It seems such a good balance between the machine size and what it's able to print. Because this thing can easily fit anywhere on someone's desktop and not take up much room. And at the same time, having that kind of print area is very convenient. So I'm gonna go ahead and print out a bunch more models and then we'll take a closer look at them. All right guys, so we saw the Rook already in detail. Let's check out the next models that I printed. These are these little figurines, and these are quite tiny if you can see my finger. So they turned out really nice. So hopefully you guys can see that. There's quite nice detail. I'm gonna try to zoom in all the way on this guy here. 
And yeah, you should be able to see quite well on his shirt there the patterns. Okay, flip them around. Now if you see some shininess here and there, that's basically some resin that didn't get cleaned off all the way and so it kind of cured into a shiny material I guess. The so same thing with this guy. Very nice print. Now under his hand here, I didn't put any support so that kind of got messed up a bit. But other than that, also a great print. So here we have a Paladin, I guess that's what it is. And this guy had quite a bit of supports all down there. So I just popped them off and didn't really spend any time cleaning them. So that's why you kind of see some dots here and there. But yeah, overall it's very nice and quite detailed print. So as you can see, this printer does quite well with miniatures. So the next thing I printed was this little frog. And this is a tree frog. And he turned out quite nice actually. You can really tell how the layers sit, especially on his back. Hopefully we can pick this up, but you can see the resolution there. And by the way guys, all these prints are printed at 0.05 layer height. So yeah, the frog turned out really good. So after that, I printed some wheels, and these are 1 tenth scale RC drift wheels. These are like one piece with the tire, so you drift on this part. And I did hollow these out in the slicer, so they're not completely solid, so they're not too heavy. And I and you kind of need that for a wheel, and it has about 3 millimeters thickness here for the tire to drift on. So I'm pretty excited to try these out on an RC car, and I will be making a separate video about that. But yeah, as you can see, it's very nice and clean, what you would expect out of a resin printer so there were supports here that I had to clean off and they cleaned out quite nice pretty cool thing you can do and just print your own wheels and you can make any style you want obviously so yeah this turned out nice all right so our next print is this fighter jet looking futuristic plane I guess and this is quite a large model and it printed standing up but as you guys can see it has a lot of detail in it and underneath the plane here you can see around the engines it's quite nice actually so this had a lot of supports going down and it cleaned up very nice. And on the end of the wings we can see that there's a really fine line here and there is an air gap in there. So the precision was quite good. So yeah overall guys this printer is quite impressive and the most impressive thing about this printer is not that these prints are this good but as I'm filming this video Elego has updated the stats to this printer to have a 4k display so right now all these prints that I'm showing you are from an older 2k display but the printer you will buy will actually be even better quality than what you've seen here by quite a bit so and this brings me to my last model which is the Eiffel Tower and this is the maximum height that this thing can print which is basically almost 200 and the Eiffel Tower turned out really nice except for if I zoom in you guys can see that there's little white spots and basically what that is is I got a little hasty with the alcohol and then I put this thing right in the Sun after that totally forgot that that's not okay so after washing this thing it needs to be put somewhere in the shade or out of light or out of UV rays so you can dry from the alcohol basically the alcohol burns it as it evaporates quickly so that's what those little white dots are but yeah, as you can see, the railing turned out great here. Very solid. And it makes me think that well, you could probably turn down the exposure time to 6 seconds and save a lot of printing time and still get a very solid print. So I think it's overexposing just a bit. That's what I noticed on all the models. They're very strong and thick. So the tower looks great all the way up. And on the very tip, we have great detail. And just a good print overall. And you can see through all these holes here. And those are quite fine. So. so yeah guys, impressive printer overall. And I'm happy to hear that they're upgrading it to the 4K resolution. Because that is going to take it to the next level. Well, I almost forgot to show the last print that I actually made. This was a very fine and kind of fragile print. And you can see how thin it is. So this is like some kind of neuron connection, I guess, whatever you want to call it. But it's just a lot of geometry going on here. And it's kind of a weird shape. It's, it's not symmetrical, I don't think. But maybe it is in certain ways. But, and I actually printed it straight to the plate just like that. Without any kind of support or anything. And it turned out great. And it's quite strong. Which kind of surprises me about this printer is that the UV curing rate is very adequate, seems like, for even something this fragile. And I don't know if it's because of the structure, but it's, you know, quite strong. It can put quite a lot of pressure on it without breaking it. So, yeah, this is definitely impressive here. You know, it just shows that what you can do with a 3D printer that would be very hard to make anywhere else. Something like this. Something this complicated. And here, guys, I'm zooming in, basically, as much as I can. 
so you can kind of see the resolution quality of this print so now that we're done with printing all the models we need to go ahead and clean up the bill plate and the vat I'm going to turn the printer off so you need some kind of place to do that and I have this sheet here we're going to put the build platform in it first and I already have some alcohol in there so it's just going to soak in there for now so the next thing we need to do is we need to drain our extra resin back into the bottle and that's what these little filters are included for is to strain out anything that was maybe left in there that you don't want to contaminate your resin with so this thing's pretty much empty. All the models you'll see was printed from this one bottle and we have a little bit left. Now don't forget that you need to wear your gloves because you will be coming in contact with resin at this point. So if we look at the vat on one of the corners we can see it has a pour spout. It's kind of like a little cutout so it's easier to pour out. And you definitely want to pour slow because the filtration is not very quick. Because if you pour too fast you're going to get it all over the sides everywhere. All right, so that's pretty much the bulk of it. So we need to wipe this corner off right away so it doesn't get underneath there. And now we're gonna set it back. As I wanna try the clean feature. I'm gonna power the printer on. I'm gonna go to tools and then tank clean. Change the time from 15 seconds. Let's just say 200 seconds. Click next. So I'm not sure how good this is going to work out, but I guess we will see and if it helps with cleaning the rest of it up or not. So I guess the big plus about this is that instead of trying to dissolve all this extra resin, it's going to harden up a good chunk of it and then you'll have a lot less to clean up. So while that's curing, I'm going to go ahead and clean up this build plate. And by the way, this plastic spatula comes in good use if you want to, you know, just kind of scrape stuff around without scratching. So yeah, it's simple as soaking it and then wiping it down and it should be quite clean. The tank clean was done and I don't know if you guys can see, but right where the light was shining, it hardened up. Let's see if it's hard enough to peel yet. Mm, this seemed pretty hard, but I do feel that there's some more left, but it's definitely got a layer on there and I still have quite a bit of resin on top of it. Run it for another minute and a half or so, let's say 100 seconds. And uh, hopefully it'll harden up more of it. Alright, so it's finished and I can definitely tell it's a lot more pronounced now. I have a feeling that if we take the vat off and just kind of push from the other end, it might break loose a lot easier. It cured quite good. There it goes. So yeah, it does work. It just looks like you need more cure time. So maybe like 500 seconds would be even better. As you guys can see it's coming off as a really nice thin film here and pretty much the vat is clean and the good part about that is we don't have to use as much alcohol to clean out whatever is left in there. So that's the whole point of the tank clean feature and it's actually quite nice. It definitely makes it where there's a lot less mess to clean up and so far the cleaning process has been quite easy. I'm gonna pour it out and then we're gonna grab a clean napkin and just wipe the rest off. So yeah, as you can see guys, overall this is a great package. I feel like this is definitely the sweet spot for resin printers. It's not too big and it's not too small when you can't print anything reasonable. So I really feel like that this is a excellent footprint for practically anyone. So especially a hobbyist that is going to be using it at home or in a small office environment. This is a great machine. So the Elegoo Mars was impressive. This thing is just as impressive. And now that it's also 4K, it's just going to blow everything out of the water, I think. For this printing size to be 4K, you're going to get excellent, excellent print quality. So a huge thumbs up from me. I absolutely love everything about it and feel like a lot of you out there will definitely like this printer. So if you're really interested in this thing, I'm going to have some links in the description. So check those out. And if you enjoyed this video, then hit that like button. And if this printer is too big for you or you're more on a budget, go check out the Elegoo Mars printers. And I have a couple of reviews of those, the pro and the regular model. And if you enjoy videos like this, I do a lot of 3D printing stuff on this channel. And you're not subscribed, then hit that subscribe button to see more. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.